listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro, the place to learn about new technology and technological advances before they become mainstream. This podcast is sponsored by Ingram Micro's Imagine Next. It's not about the destination. It's about going someplace you never thought possible. Go to imaginenext.ingrammicro.com to find out more. Let's get into it. Welcome to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro. I'm your host, Kerry Roberts, and my guests today are Joel Boyd, the Director of SMB Marketing at Fortinet, and Ben Wilson, the VP of Product Management at Fortinet. Welcome, Joel and Ben. Thanks for joining us today. Hi. Hey, Kerry. In a recent data report that was put out by Verizon, it stated the stat that 43% of attacks in 2019 targeted small and mid-sized businesses. First, I'd love to hear how you define the size of these companies, and then what is the benefit in an attacker targeting a small business? Meaning, what do they gain from it versus a larger organization? Yeah, sure. Um, I'll go ahead and take this one. So if you've got to put numbers on it, most people are going to classify small businesses as, I'd say, less than 100 employees. But I'd be cautioning everybody that that moniker small can be really misleading. Some of these quote unquote small companies are driving tens of millions of dollars in revenue and actually have a really mature operations driving that growth. Mid market, you know, it's a little bit harder, but again, the technical classification is it's up to a thousand employees. And I think we can all easily think of companies and uh, large organizations that are less than a thousand people literally driving a lot, a lot of revenue. Now, why are they being hit more nowadays? You know, it's, uh, first off, it's kind of a volume approach, but it's also this notion that technology is really this double-edged sword. So, like I said, SMBs are fairly mature nowadays when it comes to their technology. They're consuming more tech now than ever, and that's because, you know, people are more tech-savvy nowadays. And also the technology itself has been designed much simpler to be more easily consumed. Now, what hasn't changed, though, is SMBs access to the resources. They still have trouble actually, you know, hiring enough people, not just for security, but for any IT thing that they're working on to run and implement everything. Obviously, costs are an issue, you know, being able to afford all the different security things that they need because attackers can get in so many different ways. And that's where, you know, the enterprise is, you know, the good news in our industry is that cybersecurity has greatly improved. If you've got the resources, if you've got the people who know what they're doing, you can put together a pretty solid defense. And that's where SMBs are lacking. It's, it's not that they don't know how. Most of them really do know how. It's just they don't have the people or the resources often to do as tight-knit security. And so attackers realize this, and they know that thanks to the automation on their side, they can hit an SMB grouping you know, kind of a shotgun approach, and they're going to get in somewhere. And it's just, you know, it's an ROI game for them. It takes a lot of money to develop a targeted attack and really hit an enterprise. The payoff, obviously, will be better, but you might not get in. So a lot of them have just started targeting, you know, SMBs and just saying, you know what, we're going to make it up in volume. No, I mean, I, it makes sense. And I'm, I'm glad that we're talking about this today because I think it's something people may not think about as much. Like you said, they don't have the amount of people they need to be concerned about security. So it's good we're chatting about this. And of course, we've seen a rise in security as a service recently. Why is that the new way of work and how does an organization manage it? Yeah, that's really interesting because I guess the design premise behind the you know, as a service, whether it's security as a service, software as a service, there's all these, you know, different things that are out there. But specifically with security as a service, it's about providing a different consumption model, as well as providing all the functionality, enterprise class functionality that's needed without perhaps some of the layers of complexity that you find in uh, in some areas. So, you know, the driving force, you know, as I see it in product management is something's going to be easy to use. It's going to be easy to consume. Sometimes I kind of in my head, I think about it as the old kind of 80-20 rule where 80% of users use only 20% of the functionality. And I think that's been around since, you know, like the year dot, basically. And specifically around SMBs, majority of them need the functionality but they don't really have like the desire or the resource or or the need for kind of like dedicated teams to be able to deal with the management overhead or the they don't consume it in the way 
that traditional models are costed and based around. And, you know, if we look at security as a service, the idea is, is that hopefully they don't need to worry about implementation, maintenance, relying on specialists to oversee things, making the whole complexity, you know, kind of go away, make it again much easier to consume. But the flip side of that is they've got our flexibility as well. You know, so the ultimate solution kind of grows as you uh, as you need it as a business. So the idea is is to provide solutions that offer both it as a as a service and the ability to you know to to add more features in there to go bigger to scale up. You know, hey, you can even move on premise if things change. And as we all know from this year, change you know is pretty constant. So when you do hit that point in your business where you need the added depth, added complexity, or you need to add specialisms, you know, we try to make it an easy transition or an easy way to be able to scale up and move that with the uh, as a service mentality. And one of the things that you all suggest at Fortinet is that although cybersecurity is continuing to become more important over time, it really hasn't been consumable for people and organizations as it should be. What does that mean and what would make it more consumable? That's really interesting, actually, that you say that because, you know, I actually came from a wireless background before I joined Fortinet. So cybersecurity to me kind of always had this kind of dark art about it. And you don't really see a lot of information or classes or courses or these type of things readily available without already being in the industry, so to, so to speak, or in the know about where to get it. You know, one of the things we've done is opened up our NSE Institute, which runs all kinds of amazing courses on, on cybersecurity during the, the lockdown, you know, that's been happening to specifically fill this skills gap, this needs gap. And, you know, as I said before, the one constant is change. And part of that is because the nature of attacks and attackers, you know, change. You've got um, individual ones, you've got organized groups, you've got, you know, state players, all of these various different things. So it becomes like a, a real kind of cat and mouse game, you know, between those of us defending the network and the, and the attackers. And in the past, it's been something that, you know, somebody's really had to kind of specialize in. So the thing is, is to make it more consumable, you add more automation, okay? You, you take that, you take your years of uh, intelligence, for example, like we do with FortiGuard Labs. You know, we've been using artificial intelligence in there for 10 years, dealing with 10 billion events, you know, uh, a day. And, you know, the whole platforms are, are being built with that kind of native integration so that, it makes it easier to consume for the users. You know, they're not having to worry about any of that. And then you add that into an as a service model, which I, you know, I talked about um, in the previous point that, that you raised. And it's designed to be consumable into a perfect environment to fit any size business's needs, you know, uh, especially SMB, for example. Now, that's not to say that you're not going to need a little bit of customization you know you have to have that ability to be able to make it fit your business but it's really important that the majority of it you know the 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 majority of it is already handed and it's effectively implemented you know from a threat prevention perspective no i love that you just said that that the automation and the fact that it's kind of a service provider those two things make it consumable and like you said for the smb market they don't always have the time or the knowledge to understand all of this if they're not in the industry so i love that you said that and fortinet has designed something specifically for smbs why is that and what needs do smbs have that are different from larger organizations well do you know what? I'd, I'd actually argue that SMBs have this, the same need for the level of security as larger companies. You know, if you think about it, is the data that a small retailer is protecting any less valuable than an enterprise? The volume of data may be, but the value of it, well, it's going to be just as valuable to the person whose data gets compromised, right? So, you know, the level of security that needs to be implemented is really key. So, so they do need the same level of, of security. SMBs tend to be a little more streamlined and they look to target 
time to value. You know, how fast can I get this up and running? How fast can I see this impacting my business? And this is where Forty Cloud actually does a really great job. So Forty Cloud is our uh, single sign-on system for all of our portals that we have. So we have uh, security as a service portals like. 40 CASB, 40 Web Cloud. We have, you know, platform as a, a, as a service like 40 Manager Cloud. We also have 40 Gate Cloud, which is really popular in the SMB market, which is, you know, kind of management as a platform. So you can manage your 40 Gates from a single cloud console. And we're not just talking about management. We're not just talking about native security as a service either. You know, everything's accessible from one login and one place. You know, whether you're wanting to use 40 AP Cloud to manage APs directly or the same with 40 switches or 40 extenders, if you don't have a 40 gate. So it's possible to start with secure connectivity, secure access, if you like, and then drive it all through security-driven networking, all from 40 Cloud. So you can do your asset management. You can do your licensing you can for example you know raise tickets you can manage an entire fortinet ecosystem and the idea is as well is that we're adding more and more multi-tenancy features like iam and organizational units so that service providers and fortinet partners can manage the entire fortinet ecosystem on behalf of the customer so we're adding value right the way into the channel not just for smbs themselves but for partners and service providers who are dealing with SMBs. So, you know, it's really designed as like a, a single place you can go to uh, log on, you can view, you can manage, you can upgrade, you can license, you can get your support all in this one easy to use consumable portal. Ben, you are bringing some really great points today. You just said that between an SMB or a larger organization, the volume of data may be different, but the value is equally as important. And I think that's a really good point to make. It doesn't matter the size of your business. It's important to make sure that your data is secure because it is valuable. I'd love if you could share with us some case studies and stories about how you've been able to help businesses with these changes, with everything we're talking about. Yeah, sure. So without naming any particular names, you know, there's a, there's a story that really struck a chord with me recently. So there was a, a customer uh, and the SE, was, uh, SE got in touch with me about this. They had two sites already, they had about 40 employees and they were expanding. In fact, they wanted to kind of triple locations and triple the size of the workforce. So they utilized 40 Gate Cloud, which is part of 40 Cloud, to do like zero touch deployment of the entire network, including 40 gate, 40 switch, and 40 AP. And then they use our OC VPN to quickly and easily set up their VPN requirements. This all kind of came under SD branch. So they're able to use all the SD WAN capabilities as well as the 40 cloud portal, including doing all of the IP address management via 40 IPAM, easily roll out, optimize, and manage their sites all from inside. 40 cloud and on an ongoing basis they can evaluate get reports uh, raise tickets do manage all of the licensing all from a single place which is really key to them staying agile as a business and we all know businesses need to be agile especially right now you know recently they've had to pivot going to more home working so they've been using 40 client and are, and are looking at 40 client cloud which is part of 40 cloud for endpoint protection and 40 Cloud enables all of this in one place. So it's just been simple, easy, quick time to value, enable, deploy, boom. And it's all kind of, it's all kind of done. So, you know, going back to your first question, I mentioned about design perspective. You know, we're all about putting the security fabric, which enables visibility, you know, across the whole end-to-end -end network putting it in there from a cloud perspective so that you're never more than a few clicks away from being able to do what you want. And, you know, I think that's a really powerful message for, you know, SMBs because they can get quick time to value, secure their data, secure their network and carry on. And Fortinet suggests that you can build a small business cybersecurity plan in four steps. You kind of mentioned it's pretty easy. Can you tell us what those four steps are? Yeah, sure. I'll take this one. So I, I want to just kind of back and look. I wouldn't say a security plan. You know, I think there are 
four kind of key areas that, you know, companies when they're kind of getting off the ground and even if they've been going for a while, really want to focus in on a plan just to kind of set, you know, things straight. You know, a plan is really going to be what is that process when something hits. Now, that is also very, very important. You know, that, it, you know, the same way we have a plan in any emergency situation, you know, if something happens, you know, having a security plan and understanding what to do, I think that's really important to have on top of kind of the key areas that you want to focus in on. So for us, when we think about, okay, what's the very first thing that any company you're just starting, what's the first thing you've got to do? Well, you've got to get your office network up and running, you know, making sure you've got internet access, Wi-Fi access. Uh, establishing that first network with user machines, printers, tablets, smartphones, you know, you name it. That, that's got to be the first step. So gaining all that direct access quickly, but also enabling it securely so that as your data starts moving around, you're protected. And obviously making sure that you've got really safe, secure access to the cloud, to the internet, using things like next-gen firewalls, because basic routers aren't going to give you the protection that you actually need. So you need to have firewalls in there. And then also what's interesting and it's actually a little unique to Fortinet is oftentimes that you can actually get into a network, you know, by circumventing the firewall. You can get in through, you know, somebody's brought something in from home, you know, especially when we've got so many people working remotely. Our work machines are oftentimes our own machines. So um making sure that should something get in, it stops at the network switch or the wireless access point. It can't spread across your entire network. So if there's a way that you can kind of link up the firewall protection and kind of have it permeate down into those devices, that's really a good thing. So next is obviously we've been talking a lot about the cloud in this conversation. You know, SaaS, whether it's security as a service or software as a service, it makes things easier. Everyone's taking advantage of it. Um, I was looking at a report the other day that just the pure number of SaaS applications, even run by companies that are only like 10 people, is, you know, double digits. And that was from a report in 2018. And the growth trends are obviously, you know, going exponentially up. So just ensuring, though, that those applications are secure, secure using things like cloud access security brokers, so CASB systems. You know, that's what we want to think about when we're doing cloud security. What's interesting, you know, a lot of times when people talk about cloud security is, you know, they start thinking about AWS, Azure, public clouds. More mid-markets are using that, but a lot of companies when they're first starting out really don't have that level of development. So that's probably a more mature thing. So when you first thing you want to talk about cloud is just make sure that your SaaS stuff is protected, and especially email security. Uh, a lot of email is done from the cloud right now, and that is the number one way that attackers are going to get in. You know, using phishing, using the ability to kind of take advantage of our human sides. There's some really, really good fishers out there. I'm not going to lie. I've been in security now for over 10 years, and even I will every once in a while be like, wait a minute, you know, and I'll have to email somebody it's like, did you send this? And it'll turn out it was a phishing attack. So that's number two, kind of looking at the cloud stuff. And then uh, arguably the third area, you know, it could probably be the second area, especially right now is just, you know, securing your users, you know, regardless if they're in the office or if they're on the move, uh, which is obviously so critical right now. Everyone's working from home but making sure that the endpoint protection is there so that they're protected regardless of whether or not they're on the network or off the network, which kind of also ties into VPN, virtual private networks. You know, tying that back to the firewall so that your users are actually, you know, going through the security that you've put in place even when they're at home. Now, where that also kind of, you know, you want to kind of focus a little bit there is that if all of a sudden your VPN is being bombarded by hundreds of people and it was really designed to only handle 20, you're going to have a bandwidth issue. And if you can look into technology called split tunneling, that's really advantageous here. That's going to make it so just the stuff that's actually corporate critical is going through that VPN, stuff like Netflix, video streaming, gaming, that, that's just going to go straight to the provider. It's not going to take all of your VPN bandwidth, but, you know, just that concept of, okay, we got to secure our users. Where are our users? They're all over the place. Okay, endpoint protection, VPN, cool. And then finally, you know, just in like Ben was kind of talking about, 
people are expanding right now. Uh, that is, if you're talking about an SB, that is the number one thing. They are looking for growth. They are looking for new customer acquisition. They are looking for new areas and markets to penetrate. They are looking to expand their branches. There's got to be a way to control costs. You know, security and you know, users can expand very quickly. How do you control that? So, again, this is where, you know, how can you take a look at management and manage multiple systems from one single platform is so easy. And when you start jumping from platform to platform, when you start jumping to, from vendor to vendor to vendor, and all their policies don't all of a sudden match up, nobody's talking off the same sheet of paper, that's what adds the cost. So having a way to just kind of simplify that entire experience uh, is kind of that fourth pillar. And Joel, does Fortinet provide this element of service for people that maybe don't have someone that can handle everything you're talking about? Like they'll go through with an organization and say, here's how you should do it. Here's what we, we suggest. Is that something you offer as well? Yeah, Ben, ben touched on something called NSC. That is our training program. And it's something that we've made very available. You know, I think for us at Fortinet, you know, <sighs> For anybody who's familiar with Fortinet, you know, one of the things that we're known for is our, our affordability. You know, we really do come from a place that believes that when everybody has access to really strong cybersecurity, you know, the world is safer. That's what hackers don't want. They don't want enterprise-grade security getting down to the consumer level. You know, that's what we want. We want the ability, you know, to everything to get super simple. So, you know, we're designing our products to be simpler, you know, year after year. That's what Ben's leading. You know, we're making sure that the cybersecurity awareness training is out there, freely available. And, you know, the good part is we're kind of in an interesting, you know, place in the world right now in terms of knowledge. Cybersecurity is absolutely mainstream. You can't just put your head down in the sand and be like, oh, I didn't know about it. I can talk to my sixth grade niece, you know. They know what ransomware is. Heck, they're actually... I, I, last holidays, you know, I'm watching, um, they're playing um, uh, Minecraft, I think it was. And one of my, one of my uh, nephews is kind of going around and he's, I noticed on the other screen, he's got these scripts running. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, you know, I put in these codes and everything like that. He didn't even realize it, but he had hacked the system and was running exploits that he had gotten from YouTube on how to hack Minecraft to be able to run around and do stuff. So we've got this new generation coming up that is living and breathing this stuff from a very early age. And once they've gotten to a point, we can probably start adding a lot more complexity to security. But right now, we've kind of got this weird generational gap where we do have to kind of make things simpler. And so we're trying to design that and just give them the training. But I think in the future, those generations probably aren't going to need it. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I'm not a gamer myself, but I know exactly what you're talking about, that people are finding ways to kind of hack the system. So they're practicing now, and I think that's a great point, and I love to hear that Fortinet is helping those that are feeling lost or not understanding this in a big way. When you think of technology as a whole, Joel, I'll start with you. Where do you see it going within the next year? Oh, man, yeah, okay, first first year. Yeah, I kind of touched already, I guess, already on like where I see it going. Um, I would say, you know, obviously, we've got a very interesting situation that nobody thought coming, you know, and, you know, with everybody working remotely for the most part. What that has done, I think, though, is I think a lot of folks have seen that coming. We're not surprised by it. What we're surprised by is the acceleration of it. So we're dealing in a situation that is just making companies adopt technologies and strategies that they probably were expecting to do in five, 10 years from now. So I think the technology over the next year is going to continue to adopt, you know, this notion of remote workforces, a lot more distance, you know, between people, but more emphasis on video conferencing, ensuring that the experience that employees have together not, I can't say unchanged because it's definitely still changed. You're not having that physical, you know, but you still want to try and have that legal, you know, experience. You know, I know Ben and I, whatever we're doing things, we're always on camera together. I have virtual happy hours with some folks, of, you know, my team just kind of keep that spirit alive. So I think that technology just really needs to start embracing that more and more. And Ben, what are your thoughts on this? Well, 
I'm naturally cautious about predicting the future. I mean, especially after this year, if someone had told me that I'd be locked in my house for four months, you know, at the end of January, I'd have thought they were mad, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. But I guess from a technology perspective, what we'll see is we'll see more and more automatic optimization is what I see. And, and I don't mean just across security. I mean, across all layers of the network, including all, for, all forms of the cloud as well. And, you know, of course, attacks naturally, I think, will become more and more sophisticated and we're ready to deal that. But I think you'll find security will be baked into multiple layers of uh, the stack. It'll be built. It'll be baked right into the very edge. You know, access points and Wi-Fi access points. And then I think we'll see this this fabric visibility just really coming to the fore, where it becomes absolutely key if it's not already that everybody can see absolutely everything at every level that is going on at the network and get that easily interpreted so they can either take the right actions or the actions are already automated for them. And I think that's what we're going to really see near term in the next 12 months is that kind of keep being pushed forward and forward and forward so that it gets to a point where, you know, you get notified when something's already been fixed before it was a problem. If people want to learn more about all the wonderful things we talked about today, or they want to connect with you or someone to ask questions, where is the best place to do that? Sure. I'll, uh, I'll play the uh, marketing card on this one. So anybody who wants to reach us, first off, please do. We always love, you know, communicating with the outside world and kind of getting, you know, making sure that we've got a pulse on what's going on. It's uh, Fortinet, M-D, so F-O-R-T-I-N-E-T, M D at Ingram Micro. So that's two words, Ingram Micro together dot com. Perfect. Thank you so much, Joel and Ben. This has been really informative. I love the way you broke things down in very simple terms for everyone to understand and comprehend and how you're really helping the small business sector as well. So thank you both for being here. Thank you, Kerry. Yeah, thanks for having us. If you like this episode or have a question, join the discussion on Twitter at Ingram Tech Soul with the hashtag B2B Tech Talk. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro. You've been listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro, hosted by Kerry Roberts. This episode was sponsored by Ingram Micro's Imagine Next. B2B Tech Talk is a joint production with Sweetfish Media and Ingram Micro. Ingram Micro production handled by Laura Burton and Christine Fan. To not miss an episode, subscribe today on your favorite podcast platform.